So if you've never used Cinema 4D before, you're likely to open it up for the first time and think, oh my god, what the hell is this? Well, the Cinema 4D interface can be broken up into eight segments as shown here. We will go through each of these segments sequentially. Put simply, this is where we see all our shit. A graphical representation of what our 3D scene looks like, and this is everything you need to know about it. Firstly, navigation. These three buttons at the top right of the viewport allow us to control the view by left clicking and dragging. This one allows us to move our view up, down and sideways. This one zooms in and out, and this one rotates. Note, if you have a mouse with a scroll, you can zoom in and out using that, and you will never need to use this button. This button here splits the viewport into four, allowing us to view our scene at multiple perspectives, such as top, down, front and side. Finally, in the menu at the top left, we have display, which allows us to change how we view our scene from full 3D to wireframe. This is just a list of everything in our scene. Anything we add to our scene will appear in this list. We can parent objects in Cinema 4D by dragging one object into the other, like so. Anything with a tick by it can be toggled on and off, and these two circles represent visibility. The top circle representing visibility in the viewport, and the bottom circle representing visibility in the final render. Grey means visible, red means not visible, and green means absolute visible, so even if it's parented to an invisible object, it will still be seen. Finally, anything in this area represents effects or tags that are applied to said object. Right-clicking on the object in the Object Manager allows us to place tags on the object. Once, Once you click on something in Cinema 4D, everything, everything you need to know about it will appear in this area. You can select things by clicking on them directly in the viewport or in the object manager, and once you do, all the functionality about that thing will be shown here. This functions much in the same way as a timeline on any video player. You can scrub back and forth like so, and here is play, go forward backward by one frame, and scooch over to the next keyframe. There are 90 frames in any default Cinema 4D project, but to add more, you simply specify the amount here and you can zoom in and out of the timeline, like so. Materials are colours or textures that we can apply to our objects, and this is where they are stored. To create a new material, you click on Create, New Material, and like magic, it appears. Double-click on the material to edit it. In this new window, there's an absolute shit-ton of effects that can be toggled on and off, such as transparency and reflection, but for now I'm just going to use colour. Note, I personally find the default method of choosing colours in Cinema 4D to be hard, so here's a tip. Click on this arrow and choose Enhanced Colour Table. It's easier to choose the colour you want this way. Conversely, you can click on the arrow by texture, choose Load Image, and import an external image file into your material. Drag the material onto an object, and voila! Everything in this area is all to do with objects or effects that we can place into our scene. They are all drop-down menus, so from left to right, here's what they are. Pre-made 3D objects or primitive objects. A slew of simple presets such as spheres, cubes and cylinders. Splines, a variety of two-dimensional lines in various shapes and patterns. Nerbs. The most common nerb is the hypernerb, which smooths out a 3D mesh like so. All other nerbs are used in conjunction with splines and will be elaborated on in other tutorials. I guess you could say that this menu is all to do with special effects. You add them into your scene and parent an object to them for said effect to take place. Deformers. Add these into your scene and parent them to a 3D object. They will then deform your 3D object in a manner befitting to their name. The remaining 3D dropdowns are to do with environment, such as this object here, which is an infinite sky sphere, as well as cameras and light objects. Rendering is the calculation of the final image. More on that in a later tutorial, but for now here's the basics. This button will give us a preview render in the viewport. This button brings up render settings. Here we can define things like resolution, file type, and where the final file will be saved to. And once that is all set up, this button will initialise the final render. Or you can hold down your mouse click for a few additional options, like render region. This section is all to do with how we can interact with and transform our objects. Please note that in 3D terminology, transform means to either move, scale, or rotate. And these three buttons here allow us to do just that. This being move, this being scale, and this being rotate. By clicking the mouse over an individual axis, you limit transformation to that particular axis, but clicking and dragging anywhere else gives us free range. But wait, what are the axes? The axes are the three dimensions of the 3D world, named X, Y, and Z. Put simply, X is left and right, Y is up and down, and Z is forward and backwards. These three buttons allow us to enable or disable transformation of any of the three axes. The menu on the left is all to do with how we select our objects. 
This button here is model mode, and if highlighted means we have the whole object selected. Before we continue any further, I must inform you of a really, really important element of Cinema 4D, and that is editable and non-editable objects. When you bring any pre-made object into your scene from this menu, it is non-editable. In layman's terms, this means that aside from a few rudimentary options in the Attributes Manager, we really can't do piss all in terms of editing it. So with your object selected, hit this button. Now it's an editable object. This basically unlocks a ton of functionality, and the remainder of this section will only work with objects that have been made editable. This button here is Model Mode, and if highlighted, means we have the whole object selected. This is Point Mode, which allows us to select individual points, Edge Mode allows us to select edges, and Polygon Mode allows us to select individual polygons. Please note that when in any of these three modes, any transformations we apply will only affect the individual selections we've made. Finally, we have the Axis Modification button. When this is turned on, any transformations we apply will only affect the object's axis and not the object itself. Remember to turn it back off when you are done. Now when I return to model mode and rotate the object, you can see it now rotates based on where I placed the axis. Let's take a moment to talk about selecting objects in Cinema 4D. To make a selection, you click on your desired object either in the viewport or in the object manager. To make multiple selections, hold down tab, and to deselect an object, hold control. To deselect everything, click in a blank area. The same principle applies in point, edge, and polygon select mode. Let's take a look at the sphere in polygon mode. Say we want to select the whole top half, that's going to take a long time, so for things like this we use the Select tool, located here. The Select tool is typically used in conjunction with the Point, Edge and Polygon tools and is really good. When you click on it, as always, relevant information about it appears in the Attributes Manager, such as the ability to increase the Select Radius and this thing. Only, Only select, select Visible, visible elements. elements. This is really important, and here's how it works. When you make a selection, you are limited only to what you are currently seeing in the viewport, like so. But when you uncheck Only Select Visible Elements, you are also able to select things you cannot see, like so. This is really important when it comes to 3D modelling. Here's a quick and basic rundown of modelling workflow in Cinema 4D. Bring an object into your scene from the Primitives Object drop-down menu, make it editable, and make sure your object is selected. The majority of C4D modelling will be done whilst in Point, Edge, or Polygon mode. For now, I'll use Polygon mode. Select an area you wish to edit and right-click. This brings up a massive list of all modelling options available to us. For now, I'll just run through some of the main ones. Extrude. Select Extrude, then left-click and drag. This pulls out new mesh segments from our selected area like so. Extrude Inner. A flat extrusion that can be used in conjunction with extrude, like so. Knife tool. Click and drag to create subdivisions in your mesh. Or, in the Attributes Manager, change mode from line to loop for a more rounded cutting style. Brush tool. Much like Photoshop's liquify tool, only in 3D, this is best implemented on a more dense mesh, like this sphere. Note. Anything you choose in this menu will only apply to the selections you have made. If you have not made any selections, the effect will be universal. To animate something in Cinema 4D, you select it, then hit this button. This is called placing a keyframe. You then scooch over however many frames in the timeline, and transform the object somehow. Hit the button known as the keyframe button again, and voila, it now animates. It's as simple as that. Parent an object by dragging it into another object like so. In this case, the cube is now the parent and the sphere is the child. Now whenever we transform this cube in any way, the sphere will also be affected. That's what parenting is. God knows why it took me years to figure this one out, but you can right click on anything in the Cinema 4D interface and choose Show Help. Now I know what you're thinking, the help feature in nearly all software is typically the most unhelpful thing there is, but in Cinema 4D it's actually fantastic. If you're a beginner, you should be exploiting the hell out of this all the time. Here endeth the lesson. Please comment, rate and subscribe, and I'm open to any tutorial requests. For now, I'm going to return to doing what I do best, drowning my sorrows at the bottom of a bottle.